I would say in this incident in New York, how does it happen? Now, how does how does that? Let's look at it from two perspectives. The first perspective is the guy, whoever this guy was, let his buddy through. Op- it had the turnstile open, and his buddy went through. And whatever it is to ride the subway in New York, three, four, five bucks. Someone called the cops, or the cops witnessed it. And at whatever point, the cops decided to just not let it go. All right. And if they didn't let it go, it probably became a struggle between the guy giving the cop a hard time. Now, and now the cop's ego is, you know, being shattered in front of everyone. And he or she just can't handle the disrespect that he's getting from a subway evader. So it escalates. The guy might get belligerent. He might get physical. He might posture toward the cop. The cop calls back up. And that little incident of two to three to four dollars escalated. All right. Now the cop, it could have been, it could have escalated right from the beginning. It could, the right. guy could have been belligerent. He could have been drunk. He, you know, could have just mental, got out of the pokey mental, and just Ill. hated cops. There could have been a lot of things going on. But I think in, in most situations, the cops a lot of times have the ability to de escalate those by one of two things just letting it slide because that person doing whatever he did by not paying the subway, it's not it's not going to make any difference in life. It really doesn't make any difference. Yeah. You're not going to change the course of life by making him pay because it probably happens hundreds of times in New York. And with the crime spike in New York, with what's happening in New York, with the murders going up, the carjackings and everything else, I would think that a police department like that would probably tell its men, hey, guys, these little minor things, just if you can let it go, just let it go. Because look what happens. The whole subway turned on the police department. The police department looks like a bunch of thugs, all right, if in fact they made the situation worse. Right. And a lot, of, a lot hasn't been put out about it. It's just kind of it, like you it, can speculate how it went down. It's an interesting story because of what you don't know. And, and it just raises questions. And I think that's like a lot of things having to do with cops and street situations, there are variables that, you, that we're never going to read about that um, – could have led to this, and sometimes they just make no sense. Uh, how, what do we have for time? Oh, we get another for this one. We get another thirteen minutes if we're sticking okay. to the thirty-minute timeline. Okay. So let's do this. Let's skip to the three because we did. We've we've put this off before the defund the police thing, and uh, we can go back in the next uh, the next episode to to the other uh, the other news story. But uh, defunding the police, um, obviously, it's a big deal. I think it's really about not so much defunding as reallocating. Yeah, it's more or less and, and, putting money in different areas that are going to help the police. Right, and as well, as you point out, this reallocation is is kind of a, there was a shift, and then there was a shift, and now there's a shift, and now there's a shift. Going back to the p- community policing of the '90s, right? The, yeah, the if, broken if, window. If you kind of if you kind of break it down to pre nine eleven, which Cops, they had a lot of after-school programs. They had the DARE program, the school resource officer program, the police athletic league where they had boxing programs. They had the walk and talk, the bike patrols. They had the after-school programs. What's what's the walk and talk? Walk and talk would be just kind of back in the old days of policing where you had a cop on the beat. Oh, cop on the beat. Yeah, what was his name? Friday or something like that? Officer (laughs) Friday Friday walking down the street? No, Friday was, uh, (laughs) was, uh, if he was on the street, his name was probably O'Malley. O'Malley, yeah. Friday was just one of, he just wanted the facts. So, so when, so that type of policing, the community, they, they knew the cop. They knew the cop by name. Officer Smith, what a great guy. He, you know, he's a baseball coach. He knows all the kids down at the community center. And they trusted the cops. Because if you know the cops and you know that they're just like you and you can trust them, you're going to have a lot more respect for them. So after 9-11, they allocated funds more toward terrorism, mm-hmm. more toward homeland security. So they basically emaciated the COP budget Okay. And they put it into paramilitary. So cops became more of a paramilitary unit with military-type weapons, military-type vehicles, military-type gear, because they were responding to the domestic terrorism threat that happened on 9-11. Which was real. Which absolutely which was, real. Which was real. And, and uh, okay, and so as a result, all of this, uh, this is interesting about the community policing. I was not aware of the shift. Um, there's community policing was a um, 
I know it was the Clinton administration when they when they when they when they went to it, but it'll, yeah, it did. Yeah, Clinton, it, it, Bill Clinton, it, and the numbers went down, and the numbers went down. I know there was a whole other theory on this. Well, likability and, and public favor toward law enforcement yep. at, at that time was as high as, as as it's ever been. Now it's as low as it's ever been, and a part of that is because. The cops aren't necessarily in the community like they used to be. Now you don't have those cops on a first name basis. You don't have the trust of the cop in the community. There's very little interactions with the community unless it's going to be negative interaction, motor vehicle stops, interrogations, um, you know, talking to a person on the street, but more in a negative way like what are you doing it's right. 10 o'clock what are you doing in the park at 10 yeah. o'clock well i'm just playing basketball yeah. you know stuff like that doesn't isn't it's it's kind of making the police or giving the police even a worse name that they already have now so their public relations they're in a very very big public relations crisis right now because and well here's the other part of that that, that that strikes me is if you're out in the community uh if you've got a policeman out in the community or a policewoman um, not only is somebody like Nathan Arroyo going to be meeting you, but you're going to be meeting Nathan Arroyo. Yes. And you're going to be like, you're going to have a sense of, of who he is. So when you come to whatever Nathan's involved with, um, you know, whatever, probably something nefarious, like he'll <laughs> be sitting there with, you know, the kidnapped beauty queen and the penguin and the Riddler or whatever. I'm going, I'm going to the park at 10 o'clock at night to shit on all the slides. So in the morning, <laughs> when kids go down the slides, they're going to be going down a slide of shit. Yeah, so, so if you, if, if, I, if the if, amount yeah, of I thought that he puts into this <laughs> is what really scares me. You see him think and think and think, and this is what he comes up with. And of course, the slide is used by what, five year olds? Yeah. So, you're so if creep. you're a cop and you're a street cop and you know Nathan's not a bad kid, but he's a little bit oh, troubled. Trust you, me. Yeah, a little bit a troubled. <laughs> I would say I would say if he's shitting on the slide and for the five year olds, I think he's a bad you kid. You might be able to save young Nathan Maybe as a, a community mentally. policing officer. If, okay. if you have him if you have if you're down the park having a little barbecue yeah. with the kids and you kind of notice Nathan's, you know, a little bit odd and you yeah, befriend that, him. You you say to use that plastic blue house over there, go over there. And he, <laughs> he goes, Oh, I never knew about these. That's his great. Yeah, it, with, with community policing, you can if you're if you're good at community policing, if, if you're a, you know a socially efficient police officer and you react well with with the community, you can get you get to know people. They get to know you, and then they spread the word. And it's like, hey, Officer O'Malley, he's not a bad guy, right? So when O'Malley shows up at the park, kids will usually or people from that neighborhood will usually respond to him. Nowadays, you can go to the high crime neighborhoods; mm-hmm. they won't respond to you. You can go to the nice neighborhoods where all the educated and wealthy people live. And this is what I found in the last year, year and a half since COVID. Even those people look at the cops with disdain. And you have a hard time in those communities. You think that's new? I think it's been magnified in the last year, year and a half. Do I think it's new? No, I, I don't think it's new. But I've seen people in that kind of socioeconomic status give cops a hard time when they didn't necessarily do it in the past more percentage wise. Absolutely. It is. Uh-huh. You can, you can ask any cop in any community that lives in that type of a community and they'll say, absolutely. Right. Right. Those people are jumping on the but, anti-cop but, defund the police wagon. Also more, more so than more, more so, so than they have in the past. In the past. Right. Not that it's not going to swing, not that the pendulum isn't going to swing back, yep. but if the cops aren't doing anything to make it swing, if they're not going back to community policing, if they're not using social media to kind of stick up for themselves and, and show themselves in a better light, like, hey, you know, we're just like you. We work with the community. This, these are the good things we do. We just don't pull your car over. We just don't arrest your kids. We just don't break up your parties. Right. You know? Well, it's interesting because of the, 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 just the time split there, just the time split that you've got. Um, if you spend all of your time, let's say 100% of your time enforcing, then you're not spending some of the time interacting. And it, it, A, it hurts the enforcement. B, it helps, as you said, the, the public image. Let me, can I, let me give you another yeah. example. Sure. This is the uh, Ferguson, Michael Brown and Ferguson in 2014. Prior to the Michael Brown incident, when, in which Michael Brown, I guess he stole some cigarettes. Yeah. 
It was an interaction with a cop that went bad. Yep. There's two parts, to, two reasons, you know, why it went bad. You have the, uh, the people who support Brown said he was innocent, and then the cops are like, no, he tried to grab the cop's weapon. However yeah. it went down, whatever story you believe, when it was time for people to either support or go against the cops in Ferguson, they went against the cops. You want to know why? Want to know why, Dave? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to know reason, why. You want to know why. You want to wa- know why, Nathan? Sure. All right. They went against the cops because prior to that, Ferguson had a quota. You will pull over 10 people a shift. You will write 50% of your interactions. You will write tickets. You will write speeding tickets, stop sign violations. You want to know what happens? That part of Missouri was a lower income. So you pull over a car for uh, speeding, and you give them a $50 ticket. Oh, yeah, they yeah, They can't yeah. pay the ticket. Yeah. A month later, their license gets suspended. You know they got suspended because cops always get a printout of whose license is suspended. Right. Now that $50 stop sign or speeding ticket, yeah. now it's a suspended license. You arrest that person. So the person goes from having a speeding ticket to, to being, being arrested, arrested because of being being poor is incredibly hard in this country. It, it, it could be a hardship, absolutely. Yeah. Now you go to court, you may have to pay two or three, four hundred dollars in court fines. Yeah. You default on that two or three months later. Now there's a warrant for your arrest. Now you get arrested, and the cycle just keeps on it gets going. Worse and that worse. Fifty dollar ticket is worth a thousand dollars now, and the and the societal anger is worse and worse and, you have and worse. All these people that you're doing it to in that part of town. And then you deal with one of their members from that part of town, and it just turned into a complete shit show. And that right there was the catalyst of the BLM and everything else that has come forward with the defund the police. It's that police department. There's a big study that was done with that police department. Yep. And it said, it told them, you guys put yourself in this situation. You harassed people, you harassed lower income people. And they all turned against you, and it's your fault. Don't blame anyone else but yourself. And that's the worst way to run a police department. Do, do departments always deny that they have quota systems for tickets? There, there are departments that have verbal quotas, meaning the chief mm-hmm. will tell the patrol commander, who will tell the officer in charge, who will tell the street no, sergeant. No paper trail. No paper trail. Tell you guys I want three tickets a week or three, tic- three interactions a night, and out of those interactions I want one ticket. That you can't you can't cover that because it's just verbal. Yeah. There are other departments who will actually send an email. They'll have a written notice that officers are required to have whatever it is ten interactions a month. Huh. And out of those ten interactions, you probably should have fifty percent of them are either warnings or speeding tickets or some sort of a punitive type action that you took. And that's how a lot of times how cops are graded on their performance, whether it's how many tickets they write. How many violations they write, how many arrests they have, how many warrants they write. Certain computer systems that cops use have factors built into them, officer efficiency and officer proficiency, and that's a part of it. How do I know that? Because I used to work as a crime analyst, and we had that in the system that I operated with. Yeah. All right? And that's how, if you want to judge a cop on being a cop, and that's the criteria you have, and that's how they do it. And that's a very negative criteria because it's very punitive. It is very punitive. Well, the other part of it is, you know, you wonder how effective it is when it's, you know, March 28th and you've got three days to, to go. And Absolutely. You're, you're behind your quotas. Absolutely. And so now you're looking for things and maybe you're... And poor Nathan driving down the street going 38 in a 35 gets pulled over. Yeah. Innocent. Innocent young kid. Innocent as could be. Off to a comedy show. Yeah. Hands, hands on the on the wheel, like the what is it the, six? The what is it? Uh, six and nine, nine and twelve. Is it nine and three? What what is it? Nate? You just got out driving school. Ten and two. Ten, ten and two. Ten and two. Ten yeah, and ten two. and two. I, th- I saw the look <laughs> in his face. I thought I should help. Um. Anyway, all right, good. So, are we at the are we at the end or do we? Um, yeah, you know, this, this is that was a very fast thirty minutes, and that defund the police movement. Uh, are we going to pick it up on the, on the second one? Do you think, or what do you think? Oh, well, we'll just real, yeah. If you'd like, we we because because we're going to talk about what what the money's going to be allocated for. Oh, absolutely. Now that you've, you you want to go, you want to just we'll just extend, we'll extend, we'll extend the time. Is that okay, or do you want to bring it up the next time? 
Yeah, we'll, we'll just go. Hey, if, if you were thinking that we're just going to go 30 minutes today. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? So they defund the police. Yep. 